So like the Rump St. James in the last video, this is another one, Trois Rivières. I can say that properly, can't I? Trois Rivières. My French is getting better. Uh, th this was another rum that came out in that live show, that blind tasting I did with my members. But again, I have definitely 100% not had a sip of this uh, since. So again, this is gonna be a very new experience to me. Let's dive in. So. Uh, we're going up. We're going up in price now. £49 in the UK. As I like to point out, all my prices, because I kind of, you know, if I'm buying stuff, all 90% of the time, 99% of the time comes from Master of Malt. Uh, so my prices are always Master of Malt in the UK. Uh, and your prices, you know, not my trade prices and uh, whatever, but your prices. So £49, that translates into US 62 US dollars. 57 euros. So again, if you're watching around the world, let us know your prices uh, of what you pay. US, Canada, like Europe, Australia, let us know. Trois Rivières is, um, I forget who owns it now. I, it's, it comes out of Le Mornay, um, which is Campari owns. And I'm assuming, I don't know whether it says, I'm assuming it's part of Campari. I don't, I don't actually know that, to be fair. I'm assuming that Camp, Camp, Campari, at the very least, might distribute it. But it comes out of Le Mornay Distillery. Um, it's 40% ABV. It is column still. It is five-year-old as much as I can tell. And this is something I don't think I clarified in that, in that Martinique AOC video uh, that's kind of become apparent to me. I think I said uh, that it may have been American Oak might have been the AOC. What I probably meant to say, if I didn't say it, is the bearing in mind I'm filming this before the video comes out. I think I should have said, if I didn't, uh, oak. Uh, because what this actually is, is American oak, uh, and then a couple of years in French oak, which has had cognac in it. So as long as it's oak, I think that's the AOC, not kind of American oak, not ex-bourbon or anything like that. It's So we can use a bit of French oak. Because, as you will sort of see, we have got those magical words on there. Uh, Appalachian de origin de controlli. Although, oh yeah, there it is. I was going to say, I can't see Martinique, but Martinique is on there as well. So we're going up £10 nearly. Uh, whatever that was, where, where are we? Uh, $12, so I think it was $50. So, so £9 essentially, $12 in price uh, compared to the Rum St. James. Is this better quality? Let's find out. On the nose, less wood, less barrel aging, than um, the Rump St. James, even though it's slightly older. I think this was, what did I say? This was six years, six years old, didn't I? Uh, five years old. So it's had a year longer in a barrel. Uh, I get, what I actually get off this is sugar cane or, or sugar. I actually get the aroma of sugar. So would I tell that this is um, sugar cane juice over molasses? I hope so. I hope if you've given me this in a blind tasting, I hope I would have picked that out just by purely process of elimination. I would have smelt it and thought, hang on, that taste, that smells different to molasses and what I'm used to. This is more fresh and more floral. So I would hope that I would pick this out as a sugar cane juice rum. Now other vibes I get off this and this, this really does, and it, uh, this is kind of why I fell in love with it because this is kind of what I would call a journey rum for me. Kind of like why I love black top and like those multi-country, multi-island blends because they're so many different layers. And that's what this kind of gives me. It gives me the wood, but not, not in a great abundance. It gives me sugar or sugar cane. I'm just gonna say sugar cane, but that is sugar. But it gives me plenty of fruit and it goes from tropical fruit to green grugs or green apple fruit. You know, I wanna say pineapples. I, can, I think I get pineapples off that, but in a very different way to what I would get pineapples off a Barbados, Barbados rum. Um, oh, gin, um, a gingery kind of spice is coming off there as well that I kind of pick up. But I get vanilla honey. You know, there's this honey undertone to all this sort of fruitiness that's coming through. Again, like the Rum St. James, I'm struggling not to just sip this. I really want to dive in and sip this. This is really inviting on the smell. But again, just to emphasize the point, because I know there are some people that I was one of them, you know, that just really wasn't appreciative of that grassy agricole smell. You don't get it. You you genuinely don't get it. And so, and that's why I I think if you sipped it, you know, it's process of elimination for me, like coming up that this is sugar cane juice rum. 
because I don't get it off the nostrils. I, I don't instantly smell it and go, oh, that's shit cane juice. I just purely get there because it smells different to molasses. This is gorgeous. Love this. Honey, honeyed wood. Um, you've, you, the barrel agent is there, it's evident. You've got that little spice tingle, peppery sort of spice tingle, but it's very beautifully balanced with this honey sort of, honey wood. That's all I can really call it. it it's delicious. That's first up. And if you were looking at that sort of spider graph, you know, as I kind of mentioned from Rum X, I would put it more emphasized towards that sort of spice and wood kind of flavors as opposed to fruit, but not dramatically. You know, it's really not punching out way down there. It is quite balanced, but I would put it slightly more sort of wood spice forward than fruit. Do I pick it up as sugar cane juice rum on the taste? Again, it'll be process of elimination because it has got this, that's what I'm noticing now. It has got that different kind of texture, smoother, silky smoother. It, again, I, I, I want to put, it's exactly what I said in that Rum St. James video. It's almost sugary without it being sweet. It's this lovely silky texture to it. Whereas molasses can be not rough and ready. I, you know, I don't want to be a hate on molasses, but molasses can have this really gripping kind of taste to them. I, I don't know how to describe, how to distinguish it. Hopefully I'm getting a point across. Whereas the three or four kind of aged molasses, uh, sugar cane juice rums that I've had so far, Agricole, they have got this lovely kind of velvety, silky, smooth texture as it goes down. And you can't help but enjoy that. That's just delicious. Do I think it's sweet? No, but this is this, this is whole kind of dilemma. Because is it sweet rum? No. Does it taste rum? No. It's got that texture of being, I know, I, I'll find better ways of explaining that as we go down this journey. I, I know I will. But as a newbie coming into this world, that's the only way I can kind of get it, sort of emphasize those points to you. I think the Rum St. James is more fruitier. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to put that out there. That's got way more tropical fruit vibes to it. Um, slightly less uh, wood barrel spicing. You know, this is kind of got, this is probably more suited to aged rum drinkers than the rum St. James. Um, I, I definitely think if you are used to those 12, 14, 20 year old rums, whiskies, I think this, even it, what was this, five years old, I think is more suited to you. I'm gonna I'm gonna save my thoughts for the summing up. A quick little tea ponche uh, before we dive in. We, let's talk about the use case for this. So tea ponche, delicious, absolutely delicious. Even with literally half a bar spoon, two and a half, three mil of uh, brown sugar in there, I really want that to be stronger. The forty percent ABV, and I've noticed this with the blocks as well. Give me a 50% agricole blanc in a tea punch and I'm all over that. The 40% are like, eh, they're okay, they're, they're lovely, they're nice. I just want a bit more punch. And that is again the same with the Rum St. James. The Rum St. James, the VSOP, was 43% ABV. This is 40% ABV. I really noticed that that little, even that tiny bump in alcohol does for me a better job than a tea punch. This is delicious. But even at two and a half to three mil of brown sugar, I kind of think you lose the oomph of the rum. So tea punch aside, use case scenario for this, you know, trois, trois rivières VSOP. Um, tea punch, trois rivières. See, I can say all that in French. Come on, I'm getting good. Um, use case, mix it. Look, I think that is a neat sipper all day long. And at 49, scroll up, 49... Yeah, 49 pounds, 62 dollars, 57 euros. Um, I think that you would buy that as a sipping rum. As I say, prices will be slightly elevated in the UK because agricoles haven't got the volume of sales, so they have to charge a bit more. I get that, I understand that. Um, so I don't think you would be buying that as your mixer, but again, that's got that profile where it's gonna go with Coke, it's gonna go with ginger ale, uh, actually, it's a little bit dialed back 
for me to want to put that with ginger beer. I think the ginger beer might kill that. And so my instant head is that actually perhaps not the Stratford Spiced. It's got this flavor profile, even though it's got slightly more woody barrel notes, the, 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 the drop in ABV actually makes me think that probably would be more suited to um, the Stratford Citrus or the Tropical or something like that than ginger ale as opposed to ginger beer. Um, so yeah, that use case scenario for that, I, I, I'm, I'm going to sit firmly at neat sipping for that. Uh, it's going to make a lovely rum of coke. It is. I don't think you're going to buy it for that. So let's get into these uh, three, it's called them power questions. I like, I like what power questions. Do I think it's value for money? Have I got anything behind the bar already that's kind of like it? And would I restock it? So £49, do I think it's value for money? Getting rid of the whole age thing. You know, you know, and I know a lot of people will compare this if this is five years old, even at six years old, if it, but you know, roughly around them, comparing to something of the same price, molasses, 14, 12 year old, 14 year old at 50 quid, you know, you've got to get away from that. Let's let's just focus, pretend there's no numbers on the front of rum. Just focus on what the actual rum tastes like. All right. So on that premise, 49 pounds, I my instant comparison to this, and this is going to, you're going to hate me, and I know there's at least three people that are going to hate what I'm saying now. My instant comparison to this is the Plantation XO. Flavour profiles are not too dissimilar for me personally. Yes, sweeter. Yes, you know, I, I'm not going to deny that. That is sweeter. Um, and I know people are going to be this, the three people that I can think of straight away that are going to just go, they're just going divvy now at the camera. I get it. I totally get it. But I'm just kind of trying to explain it to the novices, the entry points. That's my comparison for this. I think it's approachable, it's softer. The 40% doesn't put you off. And it's roughly the same price. If I'm being brutally honest now, I at the same price... I'm buying the Plantation XO over that. Um, and that's just where I'm kind of going to leave that because it's not like I think it's better. I just, I just probably go back to that because I adore that. But my point is, I actually come back to that. I like the fruitier notes of that more. So I find that more approachable, more down my street uh, or more up my street than the Trois Rivières. It's not to say I don't like that. I do. I, I really, really adore that. That's a lovely. But even now, those examples, and again, different distilleries, different production methods, different, you know, different canes, different, you know, even, you know, the French control it so much with how long your fermentation times are. We've got all those different kind of variables that you can still get. Just because they're strict doesn't mean to say there's no variables involved. Of course there is. So at this precise moment, VSOP to VSOP, I'm kind of preferring Rum St. James. And it's got the bargain of being like nine pound cheaper in that. For 50 quid, I don't think that is value for money because I enjoy that better. I enjoy that more. And I enjoy the Plantation XO more. Um, so that's, that's that, but that's not to detract from the point that that is an absolutely fantastic uh, and totally up my street. Let's, let's do one more comparison. Would I buy that over uh, Appleton 12, uh, Dorley's 12, Dorley's 14, El Dorado 12, El Dorado 14? Would I buy it over that? Yes, I 100% would buy that over your Dorley's, your Appleton, your, your Worthy Park, your El Dorado's, your even, even Admiral Rodney, um, Mount Gaze. Yes, I would. I would buy that over those. But I would buy that over that and I would buy the Plantation XO over that as well.